I'm going to start by creating a very simple material in Revit used for rendering, though I will talk briefly about what its other purposes are in the graphics and the shading. I want to start with a black paint, make it matte. And I can very simply go in through the Manage tab and select the Materials toolbar. So up until now, we've gone in by Edit Structure and into the Materials that way. You can see that anything here that starts with a zero is something that I've already created for myself. So once I've created a material and got it working and looking the way I want, I'll rename it and have a zero in front. So A, I know that it's mine, and B, that it'll sit neatly up the top here. So if I type in paint, I'm going to start. This is our Revit library. With the exception of some of the materials that I've brought in, these items here are all something that has come with the Revit download package. This is our template file, so these are additional materials, but you will need to go and source them and double click to send them up here into your Revit library, your project materials. Over here we've got three tabs, but there is actually an additional one which we're not going to talk about today. And the one that I am concerned about, the tab I'm concerned about tonight, is appearance. So that's what happens when we render for our realistic view or our render views. In the graphics tab, you can see that this is what happens in plan and elevation. And this is how the material will appear when we go through in section, be that plan or section, uh, sectional elevation. The identity has a little bit of information. It knows its class and we can all give it a description. We can plug in a whole lot more information. And that's really useful later on if we're trying to export materials and measure them or uh, quantify them. So with the paint, I'm going to choose something from my template file. I know that actually under miscellaneous is a very simple white paint and that's a good place to start. So I'm going to double click. I'm going to send it up here into my Revit library and the first thing I'm going to do is rename. If I want to, I can change the class from generic to paint, just again helps for later on. Now over here in appearance, you can see that because we've chosen the template file that is paint, it's actually minimised all of the information choices and just given me the things that I theoretically need. So we've got the colour, which is an RGB, and I'll talk about that in a minute. You can see that if I go to the drop down, I can choose a particular finish and I'm going to choose flat matte and an application, so whether it's roller brush or spray. You don't tend to notice these especially well, but it's nice to know you've got the choice. Now the RGB stands for the red, green and blue. That's a numerical colour code that's used throughout industry um, in addition to the Pantone. So you can see you can either choose red, green and blue, you can choose your hue, saturation or luminance, or you could even go to the Pantones and nominate one of those specifically. However, tonight I'm going to choose the red, green and blue to start off with. I've popped onto the Julex website, the Julux, uh, World of Colour, the Julux Atlas, and I've chosen a particular shade of black. Now note, most of the paint manufacturers offer a very similar service. I've clicked on black, and can you see over here that we get an RGB value, so 36, 35, 34. If I come in and change this colour now, Two, 36, 35, 34. I've got the same shade that we've got back here in the Dulux colour code. As I did before, I changed it to flat matte and I made it brush. Now, what I should have done before I started, and I don't think it makes any difference, but it is important I do this before I hit apply, is I click this little button here. This one here, notice there's a, a shared. That means that even though I could have a material with the uh, sorry different name, they would still share the same colour parameters or all of the uh, same material parameters. So I'm going to click that just so that it's not shared. It's important to do that or you'll find that you continue making paint colours and you change one to red and they're all going to be red. 
So a very quick and easy way to get the colours the right shade that we're after. Keeping in mind that when you hit the render button that those colours are never going to look the way you want them to look in reality because light affects the way paint looks so very much. Now while I was on the Dulux site what I did notice and I haven't seen before is that if I was to select one of these can you see that not only can I get the red, green and blue but there's a red colour option, a Revit colour option. So when I clicked on that button, you can see down here that it has been downloading Revit materials. So I've downloaded a number for us to have a look at, and then I've just simply gone to the architecture and insert, and I've loaded them in like a Revit library item, and they've all appeared in the materials. So let's have a look and see what happens when Dulux have created a Revit material for us. And we've got a few more parameters here. You can see that beforehand, if we go back to all zero paint black, we've got a choice of the information, the wall paint, and the tint. That's all that we're allowed to adjust in that one. But if I come back to the Dulux one, you can see that it actually starts with the full options that are available to us in materials. I've only used a few, but it's interesting that they haven't chosen the paint template option. So they've still got the RGB happening there and they've got a um, little bit of glossiness and other than that there's not much else that's different. So that's a really nice and easy option. I just downloaded straight from that Dulux site and then imported all of the ones that I was using. Okay and I've created a number of paint options. To duplicate that paint type and continue making a variety of different colours, I can simply right click on anything from this library and click on duplicate. Again, I need to come up here under appearance. I need to click on, see that says if there it's shared with one other material. So I'm going to select this duplicates asset and that's back to zero which is what I want and I can plug in the RGB hit apply and I just continue making materials all of the same vein I can come back duplicate and this time I'm going to call it semi-gloss appearance duplicate the asset choose semi-gloss. Alright, so just so you can see what I'm doing properly, I'm going to expand this window as big as I can, as big as I want to, and then if I choose under scene, a sphere, this gives me a slightly better indication sometimes if something's got a gloss of how that's actually going to render. So I'm quite happy with that. This one with the wall is a good one, the one that we were just looking because if you've got a pattern it helps put everything in proportion. This one gives me an idea of how the bump and the reflection is coming along. And so we've got walls, we've got lots of different choices. Apply. And we're done.